As soon as he looked up into the branches, he heard movement, then a loud crack. Whatever was up there, David couldn't really see it, but he heard something that sounded like a scream. Flailing wildly, David watched as a small creature plummeted toward the ground from fairly high up a tree. It was breaking branches and scattering leaves as it went and was making one hell of a racket. With exactly zero time to think, David reacted on instinct alone. In a burst of movement, he dashed forward, covering the few steps in the blink of an eye, and caught the falling creature in midair. In that moment, as it gently fell into his arms, David felt like an absolute badass. But then he remembered that he also needed to stop. And that was starting to look like it was going to be a problem. David was still moving forward, his momentum carrying both him and the being in his arms directly into the tree. For some reason, he was moving way faster than he had originally thought. In an effort to not crush whatever or whoever he was carrying, David tried to turn away from the tree, which worked, mostly. He did manage to stop himself from splattering the creature in his arms across the trunk by rotating his body. But he still hit the tree, and he hit it hard. Oh she. David exclaimed as he accidentally executed a near textbook shoulder charge straight into the side of the thick tree. He shattered the bark shell outer layer on impact with a surprising satisfying crunch, sending shards of bark flying everywhere. He felt himself sink partway into the soft inner flesh of the tree, creating a sizable, shoulder-shaped dent in the side. Having finally come to a stop, David was relieved for a moment. He let out the breath he didn't know he was holding and glanced down at the being in his arms. But he hardly had time to register what he was looking at before he noticed the pressure on his shoulder was increasing. He looked back at the tree and realized. Crap, it's leaning pretty bad. Wait, no. It's falling. David quickly extracted his shoulder from the tree and took a few steps back. From here, he could see that his impact had done more than just put a large crater in the trunk. It had shattered all the bark around the area too and sent fractures spider webbing around the entire thing. With its soft wide insides not providing enough support to keep it upright, the tree slowly fell towards him, breaking the rest of the bark on the other side of the trunk as it went. It seemed like time was moving in slow motion as David took several steps to the left, avoiding the tree with minimal movement. It landed with a resounding crunch on the forest floor. As the leaves settled, David stood motionless, staring slack-jawed at the severed stump and felled log in front of him. It took a second for him to process what had happened. Uh, was that my fault? I wasn't moving that fast, was I? He thought to himself. No, there's no way. A quiet whimper broke him out of his trance as he realized he was still holding whatever had fallen out of the now fallen tree. He was suddenly aware that it was very light for its size. It couldn't have weighed much more than 25 to 30 pounds, if he had to guess. David looked down at the being in his arms and, for what seemed like the millionth time today, had real trouble processing what he was looking at. Once he had recovered from his initial shock, the first thought he had was, it has four arms. And sure enough, it did. David was fairly sure that the being was facing up right now. The thing was clutching its arms tightly to its chest, making it hard to discern much more from the tangled limbs. One set definitely looked bigger than the other though. Short and thin legs were draped over David's right arm. Well, he at least guessed that they were legs. They did seem to end in feet, which were clad in an unfamiliar type of footwear. Its skin was a little darker than David's and had a slight bluish tint to it. He didn't think of it as outright blue, but it looked a little like it had held its breath too long. Its face was hard to describe. Its mouth was distinctly mammalian and had blue lips, but with a strange shape. It had a straight upper lip and the bottom lip was split down the center. It seemed to continue down and under its chin. But since its chin was tucked against its chest, David couldn't really see much more than that. It made a sort of three-pointed star, where all three lips met, like someone had squeezed in the sides of a triangle. The being's ears were relatively big and reminded David of the ears on a hippo, with similar placement. Instead of on the side of the head, they were further up and back. At least, David thought they were ears. That's what they kinda looked like anyways.
they poked up from a bed of short brown hair that covered the entire top of the being's head. It continued down the wide neck and seemingly onto the back as well. David was fairly certain that it wasn't just an animal too because it looked like it was wearing clothes. A bright red top with brownish pants and the aforementioned footwear that looked like an unholy combination of dress shoes and snowshoes. However, what was really concerning to David were the being's eyes. Perfectly round, but not overly large, they were a little further apart than David's and seemed to angle outward slightly. Not enough to make it look like a fish or anything. But he would have guessed that its field of view was probably wider than his. But right now it probably wasn't seeing much because they were covered by eyelids. And if David didn't know any better, it looked like the being was putting a lot of effort into keeping them closed as tightly as possible. Its bottom jaws were quivering and it was making a pitiful, rapid squeaking noise. With a growing feeling of guilt, David started to think that the poor little thing was probably scared to death. He glanced up at the stump of the tree, he just obliterated and concluded that if he were in its shoes, he sure as hell would be terrified too. Not entirely sure what to do, David settled on putting the little guy down. He slowly and deliberately lowered himself and tilted his arms so the being's feet were touching the grass. It flinched at the movement and the squeaks came out faster and closer together. It didn't seem to want to move, so David laid it awkwardly on the ground and sat back on his knees. For a minute, the two of them just sat there, nothing changing, except for the squeak slowly getting quieter and less frequent. Eventually, the being's body seemed to relax ever so slightly, and it partially opened one eye. The eyelid slid down, and David got his first look at the being's eyes. The whites of the eye were amber, like a deep honey color. The pupil was solid black, and a perfect circle, like the eye around it. As soon as it saw that David was still there and was watching it, its eye snapped shut again, but the squeaks didn't continue. David took this as progress, but was still unsure of what to do. Um, you okay? David asked tentatively. This only served to make the being flinch again, pull its arms and legs in further, and start squeaking again. Oh geez, I'm just making things worse. David decided to just sit there in silence, watching the pitiful thing curled up in front of him. David shifted to sit with his legs crossed, elbows on his knees. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a few minutes, the being opened its eye again, looking at David warily. David sat still as he could, making as little movement as possible. The bee continued. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.